Hi again, everyone. My name is Mike Bernache, and I'm a business analytics coach with Lodestar Solutions. You'll hear many times over from us at Lodestar that we are coaches. That is because we love to teach and mentor and help empower you. We are not consultants. We are coaches. We are mentors, and we want to help you become a self-service shop. <clears throat> so today, I'm going to take you on a quick journey into the world of Cognos Audit and why most people hate the term audit and why at the end of this, and hopefully at the end of this, you'll not be so afraid of audits, but might actually be excited to run some audit reports to help you save time and money. Our agenda today will be focused on a few areas. First, we're going to talk about the hate and love, and then move on to the steps involved in setting up the audit database, logging levels, and importing the deployment. Next, I will discuss the different reports that are available with the samples and give us some quick tips on diagnostics. Last, we should have time for a few questions at the end. I have about 20 minutes of time or so, so please feel free to send your questions in throughout the presentation, and I will answer as many as I can at the end of this presentation. If I run out of time and do not, know your, uh, do not answer your questions, I promise to answer them through email. So let's get started. So why people, why you hate audits? Why, why do people hate the term audits and auditing? And I know people just cringe and they, they hear that word. And I think the first thing people think of is probably taxes. So it's, you know, obviously becoming tax time. And like many of you, we're going to sit and do our taxes and it's, and you have to go through and you really just hope and pray that you don't go through an audit. Not that any of you are cheating on them, but it's just a pain in the butt to have to gather up all your receipts and all your paperwork and actually have to prove what you put in was true and, and come through that, you know, without having to pay anything additional. So I think when people hear the term Cognos audit, they probably think of something similar, that it's going to cause me a lot of work, and that at the end, it's really not worth it. You know, what, what we're going to do here is kind of show you that, that Cognos audit is really here to help you. And, and at the end of this, hopefully, you're going to see that it's, it's saved you some time and money. So as you can see, the, the pictures I have here, that's, you know, that's what most people, I think, believe in an audit is you're trying to climb through a mountain of paperwork or you're surrounded by paperwork. And, and this here, you know, with Cognos is, is really geared towards helping you uh, do a few things. So here's why you should love it. I believe it can help you save time and money. There are sample reports that are included with your Cognos down, uh, download. Okay. It, it provides you access to a number of pre-built reports that are sitting out there, and, and we're going to go through those later on in the presentation. Uh, there are also many ways that you can use this, and it can help you. So you can use it for capacity planning. So if you're planning on rolling out some, some new information or you're adding a bunch of users, you can see how the system is reacting to that. You can use it for planning downtime. So if you need to take your system down, you can actually run reports that show you when people are least likely or not in the system at all, so you can plan your downtime accordingly. It can help you justify additional infrastructure costs. So if maybe your servers are being taxed or, or whatnot, you can kind of, you know, justify that. It can help you with conforming to the rigorous licensing uh, issues that you might have with Cognos or with, with, you know, products like this. So it can help you see who's run reports, who's been in the system, make sure that you have a license for those, for those people or get the licensing you need to, to make sure that you're in compliance. It can help you monitor performance, and it can help you clean up your system by identifying unused content. So maybe you have many reports that have been created by a number of different report authors over the years, and, and it's just bogging your system down. You have a bunch of things. People don't know where to go. This can help you identify those reports, delete them, move them, archive them, whatever you might need to do. So there are a number of steps involved in uh, putting this audit database together and getting it to work through through the Cognos system. Uh, the first thing you need to do is create a audit database in SQL or DB2 or whatever database software you can use. And then you just go into wherever you're holding your uh, Cognos content store and whatnot, create a, a new database, a new uh, table structure, which I did here with called C10 underscore audit. Next, you connect it through IBM Cognos configuration like you would your content manager. You simply add the database by right-clicking and choosing your database type and filling in all the info and then testing the connection. Once connected, stop and restart services and you're pretty much set up. You'll see once you've done this stop and start, it does create a number of different uh, 
tables within that database. And I will go through those shortly and just give you a, kind of a highlight of what each of them hold. Um, it's fairly intuitive based on what they're called, but just give you a little, a few highlights of what, what they might hold. The next step in the process is to set logging levels. So there are four report validation levels and five logging levels that can be set up. Um, but as you, but so you know, as we go through these, that the higher you set these levels, the more that your performance uh, degrades. So you can set a different logging level for each dispatcher service. You can do this for each dispatcher or for all dispatchers in the same folder. By setting different logging levels for different services, you can reduce the amount of irrelevant logging information. So for example, if you must troubleshoot the batch reporting service, you can select a detailed logging level for just that service, keeping logging messages to a minimum. The logging service for the logging level, I'm sorry, for a service applies to all its components. Real quick to show you how to, to get in, so you'd go to your IBM Cognos admin, you would go to configuration, you would go to dispatchers and services, you click on the more button, click on settings, and then you would be into the actual logging area. You go ahead and change the category to logging and this would filter this down to all the different logging options that are. And as you can see here, the default logging level is minimal. So that's the, the lowest level. You can use full logging and trace levels for very detailed purposes. So if you're having some serious issues and you really need to get the detail or IBM or one of us are coming in to, to help you troubleshoot, we would turn this on so we could try and figure out what this, what this issue might be. But again, remember that it's significantly going to slow down your server and slow down your, your Cognos processes. Also, if you want to create audit report that include the queries that are run against your reporting data source, you must uh, enable native query logging. You can use native query logging to learn what kinds of information users want or whether a report is running uh, efficiently. And native query logging is actually part of the request level logging. So you would go up a level from minimal to request to um, turn that native query logging on. So I mentioned a little bit ago that we had these audit tables that are created. So as you can see here, I've got a, the list of them and um, just a, a brief description about what each, but each one does. Um, so the COG uh, IPF action will store info about operation performed on objects. Your agent run will store information about agent activity including tasks and deliveries. You can have some like edit query which will store information about query runs. Native query so that stores info about queries that IBM Cognos software makes to other components. Uh, run job and run job stop are going to tell you about jobs that run and jobs that, uh, and job step runs. There are quite a few of these. There's run report, which is going to show you about all the different reports that have run. So you who are very familiar with databases and like to use that, you know, query a database, go into SQL and write a query, you could absolutely do it here. This is where everything is going to be stored. But as I said, IBM has given you a number of sample reports. And when we go through those, you'll see that most of the questions that you're probably thinking are what can I do or what can I see will be answered with these reports. So your next step is to create a audit database connection. So we need to connect the audit uh, database to Cognos through the Cognos admin area. You simply go to configuration, database connections, and connect a new database. This is the same process you would go through to attach any database or sample database. So it's, it's just like you would be connecting, you know, your sample great outdoor sales or your, you know, your ABC quote company quote unquote database. Uh, same project process, you go through, you connect it, you, you connect to SQL or to DB2 or whatever you might be running. So this is how Cognos is able to read uh, back to that database. You next have to go through deployment. So the sample reports are included in the deployment folder, which is in your Cognos install path. And that's typically um, on one of your hard drives, depending on where you put it, maybe your C drive or an E drive, something like that. And it's typically in the program file, IBM, Cognos, C10, uh, 64, or just C10 if you're just using 32-bit, uh, web content, and then the content folder. And you'll see a number of uh, folders, uh, zip folders, as you can see in the, in the slide here. Um, you know, the ones that start with IBM underscore Cognos audit, uh, all the way down through samples. 
you would take those and move those to wherever your deployment is. So in IBM Cognos uh, configuration, you have to set up a deployment path. And most likely your admin, or if you're the admin, you've done this. You may not know uh, what the path is, so you would want to verify that. And then just simply move these zip folders to that deployment folder, so then you can actually go ahead and create a new import for that deployment, which is the same process that you take to actually bring in the samples, bring in mobile samples, dynamic cube samples, so on and so forth. So you would go ahead and bring in these, uh, the IBM Cognos audit folder through the Cognos administration panel, through configuration, content administration, and a new import. You go through a number of steps, make sure that you click, there's a little box that you would click to, to import the crop or things. You need to run that once, and once that's done, you'll have uh, all your sample reports inside of your uh, uh, Cognos Connection portal area. Okay, there's also a CPF audit file that is included with the samples that you can uh, open in Framework Manager and manipulate or actually create your own FM model. Of course, uh, you know, you can use sample reports and I would certainly recommend, you know, using those as you, as you start off. So these sample reports, there's, there's a bunch of them, so bear with me. I'm going to kind of read through them and uh, most of them and, and just maybe give a snippet of info or, or what I think uh, on, on each of them here. So you have your agent execution history by user. So this um, obviously is going to list your uh, agent execution uh, by a user, by a time range. It also includes a total number of times each agent was executed, okay? You have a daily average and poor exceptions um, for all services. So this is going to monitor your daily average and, and poor expectations of threat holes set up in Cognos uh, Admin. So to run this report, uh, you actually must set the thresholds using uh, the performance metrics. Okay, the daily metric exceptions is going to list all your daily metric ex exceptions. So that's, again, going to be set up through uh, performance metrics or metric studio. Execute reports by a package and report. So this is going to list the reports that were run by a package. It's also going to include a user uh, name or user info, a timestamp, and an execution time. Um, so execute reports by user and execution history by user. Going to do some of the same things. Um, the ex, uh, history by users, so it's going to list the reports that were uh, run alphabetically along with the packages that have been used. So this is kind of one of those things that you could use to, to kind of determine which reports haven't been run or aren't being used. Okay, the failed, uh, failed report expectations, uh, I'm sorry, executions and the failed service requests. Um, so this is going to give you a list of, you know, your failure executions or basically based on preset thresholds information that it's going to give you. There's um, some log on operations by time and by username. So they're going to sell the same things, but one is going to be basically based on time. So again, you can see, you know, when your busiest times are and when your less busy times are, or also by the number of users that are being logged into the system to match up to your licensing. There's an operations by selected object and users. So this is going to show the operations that are performed on target object by users. So you're going to get some, some pretty good information there. Report execution history. So this is going to give you a list of reports um, alphabetically. Uh, along with the associated package and timestamp. So again, some report detail of what's being run or not being run. Your report uh, execution history, there's a summary report. Okay, so this is going to give you that basic same information in summary. Report usage, again, it's going to show you the number of times it was used uh, since, log, you know, since the logging database was created. So an important note here is, is that it's going to start whenever you start using the auditing. So whenever you set up that auditing database, you turn on logging, and it's not going to read backwards. So if you start it today, it's going to start with today's statistics. Um, unfortunately, you can't go backward to determine, you know, these statistics. So it, again, remember, it's going to start the day of not going backwards six, eight months, ten months. And that's important from a licensing standpoint because IBM will, if they, if they choose to audit you, does have tools where they can read back the history and figure out who's been in the system and if you have a license for them. So pretty important to note that. Service requests, so there's some more metrics, uh, user session details and a, a normal termination. So it's going to show if, if something happened and it kicked this person out of the system or if you just want to see, you know, how long that person's been in the system, how long they're using it. 
Um, there's also some summary and, and logon charts and things of that nature in this part of the, the report package. There's also some reports for multi-tenancy. Okay, so for those of you who have multi-tenant uh, multi deployments, there are a few reports that you can use that will give you same type of information but based on the tenant IDs or the, or the tenant being used. Okay, and there's also uh, included now some information and audits for mobile users. So you can see the different mobile users who have logged on and what reports they're executing. Again, you can use this to minimize the number of reports that are available to the mobile world or make sure that you know you have the right infrastructure for the number of people who are actually going through mobile which is which is becoming more and more popular um, as you've heard today there are also some diagnostic tools that are available that you may or may not know about and you can find those again in your install location go to the bin folder and there's a utilities folder within that and then uh, and within that there's a diagnostic tools folder so in there you can um, run diagnostics on a number of things you can do a, a system overview you can uh, do pull up some info. You can pull up some info on your content store uh, about Framework Manager or for any of those you who have planning. There's also some planning uh, diagnostics in there. So these are these are little executables that you can run that will give you some some good diagnostic information um, that you can use in in you know with the auditing information. I've also listed a few uh, shortcuts, so to speak, on you know how to figure out what kind of memory utilization you have or determine if the content manager is running. Uh, get some load balancing statistics uh, and so on. So the bottom line in all of this is, is I hopefully uh, you've looked at this and went, wow, this this could really help me in a, in a number of ways. I don't I don't have to be afraid of this thing called called audit. You know, hopefully you found it, it helpful and you're more comfortable and that this this auditing world and within Cognos can actually be a, a real helpful tool to a uh, Cognos admin and can really, you know, I believe, save you some time and some money uh, when a number of these situations arise. So as I started the presentation, I just want to again say that, that we're coaches and that we ultimately want to empower you. And we have a, a, a saying at Lodestar, kind of a, a brand of ours, that we truly believe in, and that is people, processes, and tools in that order. I want to thank you all for your time today, and now I will answer uh, any of the questions that have come through.